Hello, thank you for watching this video. So in this video, we'll be doing question one from November 2023, which is the mathematics number one. And this is solved for X. Uh, I know many people enjoy this, so uh, I'll start at 1.1.1 to 1.1.4. Those looks like a quadratic equations. And then 1.2, simultaneous equations. And 1.3, those looks like exponents. So, let's go. 1.1 read as follow. Solve for x. So we are given this equation. This is the first equation. So when you are given an equation in this form, it's easy to deal with. You can just put plug it in a quadratic formula or factorize. So let's factorize it. So bracket, bracket is equal to zero. We have x, we have x, we have four. We have three, we have plus four, we have minus three. So we have two brackets multiplying each other. What does that mean? It means at least one of them is zero. Either x plus four bracket is zero, or x minus three bracket is zero. So the x is equal to minus four, and the x is equal to three. So, move to the second one. One point one point two. Straightforward. Three x squared minus two x is equal to six. So, <clears throat> you know, it's a quadratic equation, right? So everything should be on the same side. You should have it equal, equal to zero there. So you transpose this six to the left hand side. So what do you have? You have three x squared minus two x minus six is equal to zero. Once you're here, you have also given a hint that correct to two decimal places. What that means, just, ah, this does not have very nice factors like rational factors. So the factors might be irrational. So it's safe to use the quadratic formula. So let's use a quadratic formula. So it says x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Then we have x is equal to negative b. What is your b? It's minus 2 plus or minus the square root of minus 2 all squared minus 4a. So is your a is 3. And your c is minus 6, all divided by 2 times 3. So push this on your calculator and see what you get. So what do you get? Write it. Plus 2, plus square root of minus 2, all squared. Minus 4 into 3, to minus 6, all over 2 into 3. So you get that your x is equal to 1 plus minus square root of 19 all over 3, right? So if you take the decimals, you say your x is equal to 1.79, or your x is equal to um, minus 1.12. 1 1.12. These are the solutions. Straightforward. Because the trick was just to transpose this to the left hand side. Once it's on, like, looking like this, it's exactly like the first equation. Except that it does not have rational factors. The factors are irrational, as you can see there. So it means use a quadratic formula. So those are your solutions 1.79 and 1 minus 1.12. Happy with that? Yes. Then we move to 1.1.3. So you have square root of 2x plus 1 is equal to x minus 1. They are given this. This is a dream situation. You are playing, they give you something like this all the time. Because the root is isolated and, you are, and everything else is isolated. The next step, what do we do? We square both sides. We square both sides. So we have 2x plus 1 all squared is equal to x minus 1 all squared. This and that go away, you're left with 2x plus 1 is equal to the answer of this, you have x minus 1 times x minus 1. Man, multiply this bracket out, what we have, 2x plus 1 is equal to x squared, x squared minus 2x plus 1, right? Yes. Then you can see that this and that will go away. You yes. agree? Yes. So 0 is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 2x. So x squared minus 4x is equal to 0. So when you here, take
take it to your quantity formula. Your a is 1, your b is minus 4, and your c is zero. 0. Or you can factorize it, take out x as a common factor. You're left with x minus 4 is equal to 0. The product of the two is 0, which means x is 0, or x minus 4 is 0, which means x is equal to 4. But when you're working with such situations, it's safe to test your solutions and see if they are valid, right? Yes. So what do we do from here? We say, okay, if x is 0, what is 1 minus? 0 minus 1 is minus 1, right? Yes. So the answer on the right hand side is negative. What is the sign of this thing? Positive. So is it, posit is it possible for a positive thing to equal a negative thing? No. So it's given that 0 does not work. Do you understand? Yes. Then your x is 4. 2 times 4 is 8, right? Yes. Plus 1 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. What is 4 minus 1? 3. Which is, this is our solution. Done. Are you happy with this? Yes. We move on. To 1.1.4. 1 1.1.4. 1 1 what are you given? We are given that x squared minus 3 is greater than 2x. So, like you did with the second one, we don't want anything on that side. Everything should be on this side. So what do you have? You have x squared minus 2x minus 3 is, equal, is greater than 0, right? Yes. At this point, you go and find your critical values. So you equate this to 0, x squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. Then only here, to find your critical values, use your quantity formula or factorize. I will factorize. So, two brackets equal to 0. You have x, you have x, you have 3, you have 1. You have minus, you have plus. So what do you have? You have two brackets multiplying each other. And the answer is 0, which is x plus 1 is equal to 0, or x minus 3 is equal to 0. So your x is equal to minus 1, or your x is equal to 3. So what do you do? You draw your thing. x is 3, and the answer is minus 1. Right? So what do you do at this point? You want it. So if you look at it, your thing, your function on your graph is positive, right? So if you have a shape like this, you will have a shape like that. And you want it where it is positive. Where is it positive? It's positive here. And there. What are the corresponding x values? These are the x values. So minus infinity and those x values, positive infinity. So what do we say? Our final solution B. We say our x is in the interval minus infinity to minus 1 together with what? Your 3 to positive infinity. So these are the solutions. Either from after 3 to that side and before 1 to that side. Before minus 1 to that side. Or 1, we just say x is less than minus 1 or x is greater than 3. This is how you do this one. I don't think it's very bad. Yeah. I hope it's clear to you as it is to me. So now I'll go to 1.2, which will require me to clean the board. So I'm cleaning the board now. So now we're doing 1.2. 1.2 read as follows. Solve for x and y simultaneously. So we are given two equations, this equation and that equation. So they wanted to solve for x and y simultaneously. So what do we do? Um, the easiest thing to do first is from the first equation, solve for your x. So that you make x the subject of the formula. x is equal to 2y minus 2. Done. Have this one. On the next step, you substitute your x where you see x here, right? Yes. But this doesn't look very nice. So it would be nice to simplify it first. So what do we have? 
You can just substitute it if you want, but it would be nice to simplify it first. So you have 1 over x plus 1 over y is equal to what? 1. Are you happy? Yes. Then you add these two. We know how to add fraction. This time this, x, y, this time that, y plus x is equal to 1. You agree? Yes. Then, or maybe you can just multiply by x, x, and x, and multiply by y, y, y. It will come out the same. So, what do you do from here? The cross multiplies over 1. This times that, x, y is equal to y plus x. So, if you, if you multiply by x here, here, and there, you multiply by the y, because you want to get rid of them as the denominators. Right? You don't want them as denominators. But the whole time, you should keep in mind that your x must not be equal to 0, and your y must not be equal to 0. Because if your x is equal to 0, you can't divide by, uh, by 0, you can't divide by y. Right? Fine. So now, we have these two equations now. This one and that one. And they look exactly as you would like them to. Right? Yes. So which means, on this one, when you see your x, you substitute that in. So what do you have? You have x, which is what? 2y. 2y minus 2 times what? y is equal to? y plus x, which is what? 2y minus 2. This times this, 2y squared. y times 2 minus 2y is equal to y plus 2y minus 2. Do you agree? Then you transpose this to the other side. You have 2y squared minus 2y. This and this, this is 3y. So you have minus 3y here. Minus 2 is equal to what? 0. Zero. Then you group the like terms. You have a 2y squared. This and this, this is minus 5y. Minus 2 is equal to what? 0. At this point, you can solve for y using your quantity formula or factorize. But we like factorizing. So, you have this. Oh, actually, you have 2y. You have uh, 2, you have 1, you have y. This times this is 2y squared. This times this is 2, right? Mm. So since the sign is positive here, this tells you that both signs were either positive or negative, both of them. Since, but since the middle term is negative, that means both of them are negative. So this times this, 2y times y is 2y squared. Minus 2 times minus 1 is 2. Then you cross multiply. This times this is minus 4y. This time that is minus y. So when you add them, you get minus y. Minus 5y. So, when you multiply this, they should give you that. 3 point to be correct. When you multiply this, they should give you this. When you cross multiply, the answer should be the middle term. So these are your factors. So your factors are 2y minus 1 times y minus 2. Right? Is equal to what? A 0. So the 2y minus 1 is 0. Or your y minus 2 is 0 which means your 2y is equal to 1, which means your y is equal to a half. And your other y is equal to 2. You have the x y values. What do you need now? You need the x values. Where do you get them? Get them from x is equal to 2y minus 2. Do you understand? Yes. If your y is what is half, you have x is equal to what? 2 into half minus 2. This is 1, so the answer is minus 1. So we should coordinate minus 1, minus 1, and a half. Do you agree? Yes. If your y now is 2, your x is equal to 2 into 2, minus 2. This is 4, which is the x equal to 2. Your coordinates will be 2, and what? 2. And half. Oh, sorry, it will be 2 and 2. Do you understand? Yes. Now let's go and check if our coordinates are correct. What do we have? Um, if um, so, okay. So if our x is equal to minus one, right? Um, put minus one there, right? Put minus one because the whole thing become minus one. Do you agree? Yes. It goes with the what? With the half. 
If you put a half there, this becomes two. So you have two minus one, which is what? One. Which is what you want. If your x and y are both two, you have a half plus a half, which gives you one. And we're done. We'll go to the next one. 1.3 So 1.3 given this thing here Right, where m and n are integers. So we are told that m and n are integers. This is what I told you. You know what integers are, right? Integers this set 0, 1, minus 1, 2, minus 2, and it continues. You know this set. Those are the integers. So given this thing there, where m and n are integers, determine the values of m plus n. So they wanted to find, right, m plus n. This is what they want. They want the value of the sum. What is the value of m plus n? So you know this very well, that this thing is an exponent. This one. These are exponents. You know exponent law. So which means this is 2 raised m times 2 raised 1 plus 2 raised m is equal to split that is 1. 3 raised n times 3 raised n, 2, minus 3 raised n. You know this very well. What do you do from here? Take out your common factor, which is 2 raised m on the left hand side. 2 raised m, you are left with 1 times 2 raised 1, plus 1, is equal to. Take out 3 raised n as a common factor, you are left with 1 times 3 squared, minus 1, right? So this is 2 raised m into, what is this? This is 3 is equal to 3 raised n times, what is this? This is 9 minus 1, which is 8. Are you happy? Yes. So which means we have 2 raised m times 3 raised 1 is equal to 3 raised n times 2 raised 3. What that means is this guy is equal to this. And this guy is equal to that. So your 2 raised m is equal to 2 raised 3, which implies that your m is equal to 3. And your 3 raised 1 is equal to 3 raised n, which implies that your n is equal to 1. n is equal to 1. Therefore, the sum that you wanted, m plus n, is equal to what? 3 is equal to 3 plus 1, which is equal to? That's what we were looking for. And that was 24 marks. I hope uh, whoever that was writing it today got it correct. We're done. We'll move to question two.